डेट्स फिट दी आई टी का आई हेयर एंड दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट एप और मेटा फील्ड बाय शॉपिफाई सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल टेल यू हाउ एप डेटा मेटा फील्ड वर्क एंड आई विल शो यू ए वर्क एक एग्जाम्पल विद लारावेल ऑफ इट सो इफ यू लुकिंग टू वट एप डेटा मेटा फील्ड इज इफ यू वॉन्टेड टू डिफाइन इट इट इज लाइक ए सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज दैट इज ओनली एक्सेसिबल टू द कम्पोनेट्स दैट आर अटैच विद अ पब्लिक ऐप एंड द शॉपिफाई पब्लिक ऐप इट सेल्फ मीनिंग that when you install your uh, shopify app onto a store you can have a separate namespace for your app to store meta fields and their values in it so an app data meta field is a meta field that is tied to a particular app installation and can only be accessed by that app so i hope it makes sense um and let's move forward with it now this can't be overwritten by other apps or merchants meaning that uh, only your app can access only your set of meta fields that you set with it you are not allowed access outside of it and uh, obviously we have to use graphql with it because um, app data meta fields functionality is tied to graphql rather than rest api and uh, similar to private meta fields uh, using meta field property of liquid yeah so the liquid uh, last line here that says you can access app data meta fields using the meta fields property on the app object in liquid i will show you an example later but uh, any theme app extension that you build um, with this concept then um, in the public at also you can have the app installation details with you i mean the meta fields and in the theme app extension also um you can have the values uh, ready to be accessed now the requirement is graphql api obviously um okay so the first mutation that we actually it's not a mutation it's a query so that we can look into is the current app installation query which will give you a um uh, response like this where it would have data then key would be current app installation and there would be a graphql id in it so you can uh, store that in the database or uh, or not you can just directly work with it so this is the query and um, obviously the url would be api version graphql.json so let me show you a laravel example of the current app installation query how it is done and um, if you've been familiar with my live streams then i'm continuing on the same project and uh, for this video i have added a theme app extension controller where i would tie some functions uh, with theme app extensions and i would show you and demonstrate you how it works um from the app side i mean from the admin side so support the channel if you want um please do i would really appreciate it so patreon the link is in the description box below or if you can't support me that's all right you can just subscribe to the channel and you will always have free content on this channel so i appreciate that and uh, here it is so the get current app installation is a function that i have defined that i call up here and this code will make sense in just 2 minutes please wait so current app installation uh, the first function is the shopify api url is retrieved for graphql json with active store headers are set the payload is formed with an array a uh, key is query and then inside that inside that a string is passed like this and then the response is made with post request so then we retrieve the body data app installation id parameter inside the response so when we get that um yeah so that is the implementation in laravel and after that the guidelines tell us that we have to create an app data meta field which is where um our app can post a value into a namespace into a key um on the shopify side so the mutation goes like this the example is shown here and uh, the variables are sent in like this uh, the thing to note here is it is an array of a meta field set input meaning that you can pass in multiple um, arrays that look like this in json format and it will create uh, those keys with those values that you pass in it as well so then we see that uh, the type used is single line text field um, which in this case works because we are working with a simple value but you can also customize this to store json uh, variables where it would be a totally json object that you can set so th uh, that is what we do here um, i have initialized this value my values which is a value that i added just now just to show you how it reflects on shopify side so then the meta field set input is taken um this is a string not an array um because the way i have set up graphql i have to uh, send in strings so we have a string in which we are sending one object i will in just a moment i'll show you multiple objects how you can send then the mutation is created um like this which is another string which takes in the meta field set input string from above and then the mutation is created finally where the mutation keyword is attached to the variable with uh, curly braces then the endpoint is taken the headers is taken like before and then we hit the um, endpoint with the query right here 
and the mutation object is the payload of this uh, request. So then we dump whatever we get onto the screen and this is what it looks like. So let me, okay. So then we can hit home once again and now I'm getting the body right here. So I can uh, disable this DD variable here. Yeah, so we are in our app right now. So this set meta field, uh, sorry. So this set app meta field route is the one that I created to demonstrate the functionality. And if I hit enter on this, then this is the response that we get. So if I zoom in a little bit, um, so you can read properly. So in theme app space as the namespace and theme app key as the key, the value is a value that I added just now. Now, if you observe this, then you will notice that you don't have to um, create a separate endpoint or a separate function in order to update the same value that you have right here. So you can go into the controller and you can just append any string that you want. So now the new value is a value that I added just now as edit. So now if I go back and run it again. So now the new value is reflected in the same uh, key. So this is one of the questions that one of my um, Discord members asked. So I hope this answers your question. You don't have to create a separate endpoint for updating metafields. So now uh, we can see how we can pass in multiple objects if we want it. So yeah, so now there are two um, app keys that I will send. So I will rename this app key to, uh, sorry. And uh, right here I can, a second value for second object yeah so i can put that here and use it right here yeah and uh, now if i go hit and refresh now i have two items inside the meta fields theme app key 2 and the value is a second value for second object so you can use this logic and you can um, append one uh, string values to particular types of keys Obviously, you can also use JSON objects um, when you implement it. Let me know how that goes. But you can do that now. And uh, the limit in Shopify, I think, is 250 meta fields per app. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. And uh, do your research before you implement um, a certain solution that um, can pretty quickly go big. So we will delete that. Yeah. So now that uh, we have seen how the app on meta field works, um, now we can proceed. So then um, we can use the app data meta field to implement a conditional app block. So now this uh, transitions into Shopify theme app extensions, where you can specify an available if um, condition here, which you can read. So let me show you how this works um, as an as a working example. So this is basically um, a theme app extension that I created for one of my uh, patrons, Tayab. Um, shout out to you, bro. So then uh, now that we are running npm run dev, then this will push the theme files to Shopify and we can run the JavaScript in it. So let it load. So the section that we, are lo we will be looking for is app meta field example. So now that we have it running, let it push the theme so we can access the theme editor. Right, so now this is um, working. We can just hit refresh here. And inside the theme editor, I can just click add section right here and I can click app meta field example. And uh, down here, now we see theme app key is a value that I just now added as edit. Then this is a redundant key, don't worry about that. And then a theme app key too which is a second value for second object. So now that I have um, all of my variables here, I can assign it to a JavaScript variable and I can uh, do whatever with it. Now app meta fields are basically a database that is kept on Shopify side where I can store values from my admin side and I can play around with it. So remove this uh, line, yeah. So basically we don't need this anymore. So basically in this um, line, you have to specify the same space, uh, app space that you are um, working with. Yeah, basically that's uh, pretty much it. Let me know how you liked the video. Um, let me know if you have any sort of question. 
um, I'll be happy to help you out. Um, subscribe to the channel if you liked it, smash that like button. And um, if you want to take it a step further, please consider donating me on Patreon. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.